I mean, you've had this career that's taken you all over the country, but uh, but you lived in San Angelo as a kid. Yeah, yeah, I lived in San Angelo as a kid, had my, my first pair of boots when I was uh, about five, six years old, my first rodeo back then, and um, just fell in love with it, and uh, ended up uh, circling the world, a military kid, and you know, college in El Paso, you know, go miners, you know, we pick them. The miners. <laughs> first coaching gig was in Round Rock and you know ended up in Texas. We lived there, lived outside of Fort Worth, so uh, big Texas Tech fan, <laughs> TCU fan, Baylor fan. I was talking to someone about that uh, just today and they said that they had thought that they had seen you at a Texas Tech game. So have yeah. you gone out to, to Lubbock on, on occasion for games? Yes, yeah, sure have. Um, love the basketball program there. It's, uh, it's a stay and go to the game, enjoy uh, little Red Raider Nation and then get back to DFW and and go to the TCU games and run down to Baylor, watch some of those games. And so you're just a time. true sports fan all the way around. Yeah, really, I, I like it. It's a great environment, you know, to get in those college campuses. And, you know, plus they have good programs. You know, they play good ball, they have good opponents and all that. So it's a lot of fun. There's things we do in the winter when we're not golfing. You know, you're here wearing the Texas Rangers gear. Um, do you think people recognize you as a player or as a coach? Um, probably more as a coach. You know, as a player, I was Greg's brother, you know. But then as a coach, um, you know, I think probably a little more face time as a coach than you, as a player. You got experience with uh, several different teams as a player. Can you name all the teams that you played for? Um, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you, you, you did. You played for 10 different teams over the course of your major league career. You've coached with a couple of different teams. But the only team that you've spent time with on two different occasions has been the Texas Rangers. So what was the draw to come back to Arlington? Um, well, Chris Young had a lot to do with it. And uh, the fact that Bruce Bochy came out of retirement and said that he was going to, you know, take the, you know, lead, lead, lead from the front. You know, I said, man, that's, uh, that's pretty cool right there because I was, I was on the heels of, you know, maybe that was it for me. but. Um, you know, I talked to CY and gave me his vision and talked to Bochi, share the vision. And I said, all right, I'm in and came back, could sleep in my own bed, you know, so uh, I wanted to slow down. And I think sleeping at home is, is a lot of that slow down that I need. Bruce Bochi seems to be a very humble man, doesn't want to talk about being a Hall of Fame yeah. guy, but he's, he's a Hall of Fame manager, is he not? No doubt about it. He's, he's going to go into a Cooperstown, get on that big team that they have there, but he's earned it, you know, he, he, um, you know, gave his heart and soul as a player, and then he got into managing. And you know, who'd ever thought that when you get into the other side of it, you were a better manager than you were a player? And uh, you know, he's definitely a Hall of Fame manager. 2,000 wins. It's a small group that has that. You know, three world champions. Small group has that. So, um, already been here, learned a lot from him. I think the players have too. And just that overall demeanor. You know, uh, walk slow, talk slow, think fast. You know, that's that's kind of Boach. So. Talk a little bit about this rotation. Obviously, you had a discussion with CY, and you 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 knew that they were going to make an overhaul to this this starting rotation. Are you excited about working with these guys? The signings he had in mind, I was like, man, if you can get one of those, that'd be pretty cool. And then you know, thank ownership, we got all three of them. But you know, starting at the top with uh, Jake Degrom, you know, when he's out there, he's probably the best pitcher in the game. Um, does things that other people can't do. You know, he was blessed with a talent that was superior to other, go other guys. Everybody wants to throw the ball like Jake, you know, command it like Jake, but you know, he throws the ball where he wants and he throws pretty damn firm too. And he's track record, couple Cy Youngs. So, you know, definitely a lead horse right there and right behind him on his heels is Nathan Navaldi, who's a consummate pro, um, pitched in the big moments, world champion himself, overall great guy. And Great stuff, great pitcher, good performer. You, you seem to be kind of more laid back when I see you out there coaching and talking with the guys. Now, Ivaldi seems to be very intense. <laughs> is, is he very intense? Oh, it's game day, yeah, yeah. He's he's well prepared. He's um, he good guy to have on the team. I tell you that, he's really good. He makes other people better. We pick up Andrew Haney, who's just kind of a unicorn fastball. So it's uh, you know, he's been a high strikeout guy. That leads to high pitch counts when you strike people out like he does. But, you know, he's going to keep us in all the games that he starts. And, you know, Martin Perez was a, had a nice year last year. And, you know, it's kind of the uh, 
stability of the rotation with the 196 innings that he threw. And that's, you know, looking for a repeat performance of that. You know, he's a guy that I first met him when he was 19 years old and fell in love with. You know, and now here we are, he's 30, 31, whatever. I've known him all of his career. So it's good to be reunited with him. And uh, John Gray, you know, out of Oklahoma, a red dog. He's, uh, he's going to be a big gamer for us this year, man. He's, um, he's got his goals. We talked about attainable goals and what we want to do with him. And uh, we're going to give him the ball and just let him roll with it. What about this bullpen now? You don't have a set closer. You don't have a set eighth inning man. It's just kind of a lot of really good arms out there that are going to, you're going to have to figure out things on, on the run. Yeah. So is that something you're comfortable with? Yeah, you know, players are going to define their own roles. All we got to do is throw them in situations and try to always put them in a, a position of strength, you know, uh, put them in a good spot where they can succeed. And that's what we'll do. And, you know, the guys that, uh, you know, they're going to prevail and we're going to be able to pick and choose who we want against certain parts of the lineup. And then when it comes down to the, uh, the back end of the pen, you know, they'll let us know, you know, what their roles are. But the good news is we have, we have options, you know. Uh, Jose Leclerc's done it. He's been there. He's coming back off of his injuries, and you know he, he rebounds and gets back to being his healthy self. He's going to be a big viable candidate. He's going to pitch late in games. He's going to help us win. Johnny Hernandez, great stuff. Little uh, different approach now that we've been together for a couple months, and he's had a tremendous spring by doing the things we talked about. We get Will Smith, been a closer in the past. He's been out there. He wants the ball. He gives us another option. He's our lefty that spins it really well. Um, you know, Brock Burke had a great uh, rookie year last year, you know, pitching usually a multi-inning type guy when the game was closer ahead, so we're looking for a repeat performance out of that. And, um, you know, local products, you know, Taylor Hearn, you know, good guy to have on the ball club, man. You always got to like to have a, a cap roper on your team. You know? <laughs> he does, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame pedigree. Yeah, yeah. Hall of Fame pedigree. Yeah, dad's Hall of Fame rodeo guy, and Father Robbie's rodeo man, and <laughs> Taylor's the ball player. And uh, you, How, how's the golf game going so far? Oh, uh, well, since we started games, we don't get to play as much, but we did, we did have two off days, so we was able to get out and play 36 each day. So. How'd you do? Um, you, you're leaving that part out. Um, well, I got whooped the other day. Um, you know, you go out, you have a nice round, you think you're doing pretty good, but I watched Ian Kensler shoot a 66, so I got my butt kicked that day, had to pay up, you know. But it was like, I thought I was in a pro-am at one point. You know, I go, man, this is, this is what it's like playing a pro-am, the way he's hitting the ball. A lot of fun. We've had a good time playing golf. I appreciate your time. You bet. Thanks Doug. so much. Appreciate it.